Rodriguez in his, his novel, Hunger of Memory, he would say, when you come here, you are going to have to forget about your home culture. You will not speak that language. to pretend that it doesn't exist, but that's not reality. 1972, just seven years since the Watts riots of the civil rights era that forever changed the landscape of South Los Angeles, a consciousness was taking place on the world's leading research university, one amongst LA's native brothers, sisters, and immigrant friends known as Chicanos. This was a time and movement for change for people of color, not only in America, but here at USC. Dr. Hubbard foresaw the growth of the Latino community. I heard him say that uh, there will be more and more ethnic groups coming into our campus and we better be ready to accept them and provide the services to make them successful through here. The goal of a Centro Chicano was to open the doors to higher education for uh, Chicano and Latino students, and not only opening the doors, to make sure that they had every opportunity to succeed. The idea and concept of the Latino floors uh, came out of a Centro Chicano. And so then the focus began how to identify what the critical mass should be that will allow it to have its own identity, its own impact. There was a need to bring the students together so that the networks, the extended family sense, the sense of belonging could be carried in the Latino floor. So it was an idea and concept that initiated out of the Centro Chicano for the sole purpose of ensuring that students have opportunities to succeed. If I were to divide what has happened here in three generations, one would be the founding generation. There were the activists, there were the protesters, there were all this, you know, with good ideas, all that. The Chicano students who were studying here at USC in the teacher ed department here, wanted to pursue bilingual education as their field. They wanted to get their student teaching experience in East LA. The teacher ed department here said, no way. And the students demanded that they be put in East LA schools so that they could practice and become bilingual teachers. They said, no. So the students protested and demonstrated. All of them got suspended from the teacher ed program. One of those individuals is Darlene Robles, who earned her doctorate, who just recently retired as superintendent of schools for LA County Schools, and who recently USC brought her in as a full professor. Isn't that ironic? Mayor Tom Bradley was initiating a series of murals across Los Angeles. And so I was able to meet with him and I got him to declare the USC mural the first one of 200 that were going to be put up around the, the city of Los Angeles. It was a very dramatic, a very powerful mural dealing with the, the downtrodden and the abuse and so forth. It had a big message. Facing the north side of the university, people driving by could see the mural. And she did not want that to be an image of the university. But the mirror went up, and it was there for a number of years. Uh, then there was the development of programs. One of the first events that we had uh, that brought uh, recognition to USC was the uh, Festival de Flor y Canto, the first uh, literary conference of Chicanos in the United States. Which was the English department putting together a compilation of uh, up and coming Chicano literary figures. The university was not happy that we would have a graduation or they would even assume that we're giving out degrees. So it became a sort of a cultural celebration. I had this Father Justin Dion. He would lead the procession with a cross. And then we had the dancers behind that. And then behind that were the students according to GPA. When we selected the representative of the class, he would have to be on those grounds. And he's the one that would carry the staff with the different colors of the different countries. And he's the one that would go let the celebration begin. We want 
wanted to establish a mural here on campus. And the more they objected to it, the more the students became committed to doing it. The idea of the artist, he, he just come here from Mexico and he began to meet with us and uh, all those people who were tidying with Cesar Chavez one way or another. It was the first Friday in December. As people were coming in, we realized we were going to have our 50. We realized we were going to get 50 people without a problem. And as we were walking out of the church to start the procession, I started getting a little nervous, and I realized that we had over 100 people. To see the families and the parents and the students with their candles, and they were walking across campus, and we actually stopped traffic. DPS, we had informed DPS that what we were doing, and they stopped um, the street so that we can cross the street. And it was just, it was beautiful. And then I see the new directions. New directions where I see outside, here, new directions, the program. 